Hey guys, welcome back to Tech702. Mike here again, and this will be the third installment in my How To Crypto series. So if you're just joining here, this is going to be a video specifically on how to execute trades. I'm going to use Coinbase Pro platform to demonstrate, but all the principles and techniques and how we go about it, it all applies to all the exchanges. Their UI just might look a little bit different. I'm gonna use Coinbase Pro because it's super accessible and it's very simple to use and I feel it'll give the best illustrative guide to everybody tuning in. So the first video in the series was basically what is crypto? The second one was how do you make an account? And now this one's going to be how do you trade? Go through the different methods that we use for trading, different kinds of orders, market orders, limit orders, stop limit orders, stuff like that. How we use those as tools to protect ourselves and then set ourselves up for success. So grab a drink, hang out. This will be pretty quick. Okay, so let's dive right into it. As I mentioned, Coinbase Pro, I've got it up here in front of us so we can follow along. I just made a little default portfolio here and threw 50 bucks in it to kind of walk you through it. So the first thing you'll notice is any UI you're gonna use for trading, it's gonna have a whole bunch of numbers on it. There's going to be a chart. Hopefully it's a candle chart. That's what you see in the middle here. And all that is is the green, as you might expect, is when it goes up and the red is when it goes down. So each of the segments of time at this point, you see right here, it's set on 15 minutes. You can set it to different denominations. There's one hour candles. Those are referred to as candles. So at the end of each of those time periods, the stock or the coin in this case is either up or down. And that's what that illustrates there. Show you what's going on. We'll go more into that in advanced TA trading, which will be the fourth or fifth video in this series. But that's what that is that you're looking at. And you can adjust it smaller, bigger and it's very useful when we're gonna do technical analysis later on. In the middle here, they have volume. This just shows the amount of orders open at each price point. And on the scrolling side here, you're looking at trade history. So the order book shows what is being listed right now, what people are buying and selling at. And then the trade history is where the sales are actually occurring. How many, how big, how many coins, the time, et cetera. It's pretty self-explanatory. Here we have the last trade price. And as you can see here, we're looking at BTC and we get into the wallet balance and stuff like that. So I transfer 50 bucks USD, United States dollars into there. And what we can do now is go into buying and selling. So you have two tabs, you have a buy sell, a buy tab and a sell tab. So since I don't have any BTC, well, I have a little bit of crumbs here, but basically I wanna buy Bitcoin in this scenario. So you have three different kinds of orders. You have what's called a market order, which is basically as these orders are listed right here, whatever the next available price is, you'll pay it. You're not saying a specific price. You're saying whoever's selling Bitcoin, I want to buy that much worth. So if I wanted to buy $50 of Bitcoin, I would just type in 50 United States dollars. And then it explains there's a fee, which we'll talk about in a second. And it shows me how much Bitcoin I would get. So I would place place buy order and it would fill my order instantly with whatever is available. Okay, so we talked about a market order over here. Now we're gonna talk about a limit order. And that's similar to a market order, only in now that we can determine what price we wanna purchase it at. So as you look up here, this is the current price of Bitcoin, 59,850 bucks. But I don't wanna pay that. Let's say I'm waiting for the dip. I wanna buy the dip. I wanna buy Bitcoin when it gets down to $59,000. So I type in my limit price, that's the price I'm willing to pay, and then I can either specify the exact amount of Bitcoin I wanna purchase at that price, or if I don't wanna do the math and figure out what 50 bucks worth is, I just click max, the max button right there, and it tells me that 0 0.00085 Bitcoin is 50 bucks. And that's simple as that. You place the buy order. If it never goes down to the price that you put for a limit price, it'll never execute the trade. The money will stay in your account. Okay, so we talked about a market order and a limit order. The next one on the list here is a stop order. And this is a little bit more complicated, but just pay attention here. If you look over here, you have a stop price, an amount, and a limit price. So we already know what a limit price is. And we know what an amount is. So what is a stop price? Well, let me give you a scenario. Let's say tonight I'm going to go to bed. And as you can see, Bitcoin is at around $59,000. I'm already up, so I don't want to risk losing it all there is a maximum amount of money I'm willing to risk to lose. And let's say that's $58,000. So what I would do is I would say at $58,000, I'll set it in there, I wanna stop. What that means is that's going to 
the stop is actually the start, so it's a little confusing. When you put in a stop price, that is telling the exchange that you want to start selling or buying at that price. How much? I want to sell all of my BTC. So let's say 0 0.008 in this price. And then the limit price would be the bottom of that stop. So maybe 57,900 or something along those lines. The reason that that's important is because now it will sell between 58,000 and 57,900. You never want the stop price and the limit price the same because if there's a your order may not be got to, and maybe you don't dump it all when you wanted to. So it's better to give yourself a slight range in here to make sure that your stuff sells when you want it to or buys on the other end. So as you can see, this is super simple stuff. Now, everything I just showed you also applies the inverse. So a market order works the same for selling. A limit order works the same for selling, meaning that you're setting the price you're willing to sell at. You're going to do this when you want to sell for a profit. So let's say I bought Bitcoin right now at $59,700. I want to sell it at $65,000, but I don't want to babysit this all day. I would just come down here and say, I want to sell all of my Bitcoin at $65,000, click the max amount, and it would automatically dump once the price hit $65,000 to anybody willing to pay it. Now, one final word here is you'll notice fee at the bottom here. Another reason I don't use the apps is a lot of these ones like Coinbase Pro, they have very, very low fees. So if I wanna come in here and I wanna buy 50 bucks, you see it cost me about a quarter. Well, the fees here are low. If you go to some of these apps and some of the exchanges, you gotta really pay attention to these fees. We're talking about 50 bucks worth, so a quarter may not seem that much. But when you're talking about thousands of dollars or for people to have weak hands, meaning that you sell every time and you panic every time the market dips at all, these fees add up and you can end up erasing all of your gains or even just flat out losing money. So the last thing you need to figure out is how to buy the coins. You know how to do the market orders and the limit orders, stop limit orders. You just come over here to select the market. It'll, it'll be called market wherever it is. And then you have all the coins that are available on that exchange in a big list. You can either type in the name of the coin that you're looking for, if you know the initials, and then find it, or you can go by US dollars, there's BTC and F trading pairs. Don't worry about these for right now. Um, what this means is instead of having to buy, let's say I wanna buy Litecoin. So if I wanna buy Litecoin, I can use the cash that I have in my account and buy it right here. I just click on it, go here. It's got a US dollar trading pair and I can buy it. But let's say I want to buy BTC or I have BTC and I wanna buy Litecoin. Well, it's actually pretty cool because then if I already have Bitcoin, I just go to the Bitcoin and Litecoin to Bitcoin. So we never have to go back to United States dollars or whatever currency you're using to get the proper trading pair. So I can actually buy directly Litecoin with Bitcoin or Litecoin with Ethereum. And there's a lot of trading pairs. You'll learn them as you go. But the advantage of this is you're not picking up that fee. Remember, there's a fee charge for every transaction. And that way you're just going from one coin to another, it can save you some money at least in fees. So basically you can go through here, you search for them, you find the coin you want. And then also of note, another reason it's good to have different exchanges is different exchanges have different coins. So not all coins are on every exchange. Yeah, I know it gets a little complicated, but that's why you gotta do your research. But in general, you go into the market, you find the coin you wanna buy, and then you execute one of the orders that we discussed earlier. And there you have it. I told you down and dirty to the point, no time wasted. Hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions about specific stuff, throw it in the comments below. Uh, the most important thing I can stress to you guys is have a plan. Don't go into this stuff and just buy something and then sell it. And you're gonna end up spending a lot of money in fees. You're gonna waste cash. You're gonna waste time. You're gonna get frustrated. So make your plan before you ever buy your first coin. I know we all wanna jump in and try it. It's fun, it's awesome, but just be smart about it. So ultimately, hopefully you guys all learned something. If it was useful to you, please sub to the channel. I have a few more videos in this series coming as well as some tech videos coming at the end of the month. If you know somebody this might help out, go ahead and share it with them, share it on your social media. Hopefully it answers the very basic questions and gets more people involved with this really cool thing we got going on. In the meantime, thanks for your time. I'm Mike. Until next time, I'm out of here.